What's up, everyone? Welcome back to Strangecast, Player One vs. World's Life is Strange podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Adnan. My co-host, Adam, is here. Adam, you're here! I just want to say, um, uh, Jace did not steal my family and uh, force me to go off of the... Jace, I'm saying it. Jace, I'm saying it. He did not force me to go off Strangecast. So that... Nope. Jace, I'm saying it. No! I'm just kidding. <laughs> Uh, Jay, Jace He's did a wonderful job. Jace is, <laughs> Jace is there. Yeah, he um, he uh, took my family hostage. Uh, said that I'm going on Lost Records Journal. Um, and uh, you know, forced my hand. That's basically what happened. He is he is off camera, guys. As by the way, as well, I paid mm-hmm. for the plane ticket from to be there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, Jace did a wonderful job. Um, yeah. So I was on break l- last week, but yeah, no, Jace did uh, absolutely. Um, spot on, smashing, um, but it hell Quidditch kind of kind of job. This that's the video I got from people as well. Like straight off the bat, he had it on this big TV, and he's like doing this British like, and I'm like, oh my god! It's like, I'm like, I is, can't understand what they're saying. The, they're both talking about like fish and chips and Big Ben all the time. Like I can't understand what they're saying. <sighs> See, this is this is what we put. I'm gonna bring Chase back now. <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, but yeah, it was great having Jason. And obviously, that was Adam's hand pick, picked person to be on here. He's like, you mm-hmm. should definitely get Jace to do that. So, Jace, thank you so much for covering the Lost Records Journal. But yes, we are back for our other Strange Cast episode. This is our sec. This is actually our last one for the month, which is just inconveniently time. But we'll, we'll see what happens later this month anyway. But yeah, we are back anyway. Um, if you are new here, as always, please do consider dropping a subscribe on the channel, turn on notifications, like the video, share with your friends. No, just whenever it says like when I'm recording oh God, I yeah just, yeah so, so yeah i'm not even gonna cut that out it, it, by the way we on a new software it always pops up like a prompt in the most inappropriate time i'm like what's happened to the recording i'm worried and it's like no it's just like oh yeah you should hang up when you're done it's like oh cheers for that um but yeah back on track yeah you know if you are new here do drop a subscribe on the channel turn notifications like the video share your friends help support the channel helps keep up to date with the channel and also strange cast available on all podcast services so we're available on spotify with the video version we're available on apple podcasts we're available on everything so do go and download them rate them follow them we have 213 followers on spotify now and over 22 ratings which is unbelievable so thank you so much for that and if you haven't already please do rate them as well and obviously the lost records journal is out so you can check that out that's the first episode of the month um, but there'll be another one later this month you can check out and also as well come to the youtube channel because we've got an interview with uh steph Triverson, which just recently dropped we're recording this saturday um, on the 13th of July, dropped on the 12th, and Steph Triverson made the music that was in Life is Strange, True Colors is Wavelengths DLC. You'll hear your love in that. And also there's an interview with Abby Nissenbaum, who worked with Steph Triverson on her track and is trying to get her music in um, Double Exposure. So do go and check them out. They are just YouTube interviews. As I said, there's going to be a lot of more content coming to the YouTube channel. So if you are just on podcast services, do come on over and help support the channel because you can keep up to date with it. Um, and thank you to all the lovely people who sent us lovely messages about becoming a YouTube partner. That was great as well. So hopefully things pick up as we go along. Um, speaking of which, before we start, um, Adam, and I, I know we've got loads of news and stuff. You have the Juice Son album as well. Which I, um, How have you found that? Uh, I was surprised you didn't share my pictures that I sent to you. Yes, I'm still meant to do that. Do do not worry. Yes. I got them. <laughs> uh, yeah, I know. It's a really good sounding album. Like there's a there's a lot of vinyls that aren't uh mastered correctly to be on vinyl and it just kind of sounds a little bit off sometimes. No, this one was perfect, dude. Like absolutely like the mastering for the vinyl was perfect. Um and I and I could um I could see where I'm at on each level with, with how the songs are going. That's a lot with me and oxen free. If you play any song, I'm like, Oh, it's on the uh, beacon beach, but no, this one, I was like, it's very nice. And even if you don't like, uh, if you never played juice on, it's a good, like background, um, vinyl where you can just like put it on and just relax for a little bit. So, uh, mm-hmm. the colors are great. Um, the mastering's great. The juice on vinyl was spot on. Spot, spot. Um, yeah, I'm glad that you're enjoying that because it does look pretty cool, and I'm keen. I'm, I'm, I'm starting to attempt to get myself into a vinyl collection at some point. I've, it's almost bled onto me, so yeah. I'm keen to look at potentially picking it up because it does sound pretty majestic from a little bit of the music I've heard here and there. Mm-hmm. We'll speak of Juice on later on because it's one of our topics. But Adam, first piece of news, yes. very small piece. This is from Michelle Coe. 
Life is Strange 1 and 2 co-director, um, co-creator of the franchise, um, don't, know, don't Know Montreal studio, studio creative director, Lost Records is director. I'm giving all these titles here. Michelle has tweeted because I thought this was a little piece we'll bring in because we both caught our eye on this game, didn't we? And it's none other than Mixtape, mm-hmm. which was revealed at the Xbox Showcase um, recently, which was at the same time as Double Exposure. Kind of fallen a little bit quiet, obviously. It seems to be, have that same kind of essence of like Lost Records, Bloom and Rage, where it's just been kind of like overshadowed because of the Max reveal and stuff. But Michelle tweeted at someone because he put, I'm really excited about it, which is a big endorsement for anyone who's making a game that is very much Life is Strange-esque vibe because we yes. did have that as well. You you were, I think even before we did the live stream reaction to Double Exposure, we were like, that game mm. caught our eye. We were like, Katie Benz is in it. Katie Benz is not in it, as she yeah. told us. Um, but I got really big vibes of it. I think the art, I even went and watched the trailer again before we started recording because like, the art direction so beautiful on it. The mm. kind of style is like Life is Strange-esque. And and I'm kind of like keen on it. I saw someone say that almost like mixtape is more life is strange than double exposure. And I was like, they're not like, wrong. Oh. They're not wrong. Yeah. <laughs> I, was like, I, I can see that actually. I can see that. But no, I thought it was a good one because I, I'm intrigued. Like, are you excited for mixtape? Are you going to keep an eye on it? Obviously, not necessarily like a day one buy or anything, but like, are you just going to keep an eye on it? Because it is one of those things I'm looking at thinking, I kind of want to cover this on the channel because it's giving me. Life is Strange oxen free vibes. Yeah. Um, no, it's a day one buy for me. I was actually looking up uh when it comes out. I think they just said 2025, yeah. I, I yeah, there was there was no definitive release date in that. Yeah, it says just coming soon, 2025. Um, no, that's a day one buy for me. Like I'm excited for it because I like the Artful Escape. Like that was a mm. that was a great game. Um because I think they just did mixed. Oh, they did. Okay, they did. Oh, they did a bunch of games. Okay, interesting. Is this is this right? Wait, what? <laughs> Wait, am I on Annapurna? I'm on Annapurna. That's why. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Be- uh, Beethoven Dinosaur. I'm pretty sure they just did Artful Escape, and now they're doing this. But I'm not sure about mm. that. Uh, no, it's definitely day one buy for me for sure. Yeah, it seems like one of those little hidden gems that you find, don't you? Mm-hmm. So when you recommend me Oxenfree and I've loved playing it, I was like, you, we've seen it. We both saw it in the, in the showcase. We were like, the vibe is there. And it's like pretty much like almost double A Sundance indie kind of style game, even though obviously it's got a different publisher. But like, you know, we're talking about like, it's got that, that style, that vein of it. And I'm like, I'm keeping my eye on that. Um, I, I did, by the way, I was like, when, when, I went, when I went back and watched the trailer again, it sounded so much like Katie. We're like Loretta yeah. Rice levels of theory here. Do you like what we want to do with Rachel Lab? But it's like, no, it just sounded so much like Katie. I was like, I'm so surprised I was off put by that. I was like, I thought that was Katie Benz, but no, no bueno. I was like, damn. Damn, dude. It's uh, crazy, how, crazy how people sound so similar. But yeah, keeping an eye out on that. And I might even try and bring it onto this channel as well, a bit more as well, because I'm kind of keen to keep mm. anything that is like a strange esque vibe. I do kind of cover, especially with like this bed we made, which we've covered recently as well. So. Um, yeah, definitely go and keep an eye on mixtape. And obviously, it's great to see Michelle's endorsement on that as well, to see him excited for that. Um, Adam, next piece of news? Yes, definitely. So, yes, our next piece of news, none other than a little small one as well. It's Alex Chen's birthday in the month of July. Mm. So, <laughs> Life is Strange, his Twitter account tweeted on the 10th of July. It's Alex Chen's birthday. Leave an emoji to wish her a happy birthday and share a piece of artwork. Um, Alex Chen, yeah, I love her. I love Eric and Maury. Mm -hmm. as well forgotten about as well a little bit i think as well in terms of the main protagonist kind of thing especially the conversation about true colors true colors is very i think it's almost like i think in itself i think it's almost like a little bit like life is strange too where it's like a very divisive game at the minute i know some people adore it but i think it's like it's almost like a forgotten entry at the minute it just seems to like not have anywhere near as much conversation but yeah love love um Alex, I thought that was a very strong character, to be honest, as well. And in terms of like, obviously, Maya did the the singing for it, and then obviously our none other than our lovely BAFTA award, BAFTA nominated, who should have been BAFTA award winning, yes, um, actor Erica Mori, the yes. Mori, who is absolutely amazing in that role, and she nails it one hundred percent. Yeah, I do love um, Alex Chen and Adam. Actually, before, yeah. um, do you have anything to add? Actually, on no. the birthday thing. Uh, does Adam have anything to add? Um, yes. um. No, happy birthday, Alex Chen. Happy birthday. Yes, because I'm going to ask you this as well, prediction yeah. as well. Do we see Alex Chen in Double Exposure? No. Well, you don't no. Mm-hmm. Mm. Ah! No, no, we won't. We won't. We won't. I don't think so. Because, like, 
it's set in Vermont and you know, Alex Chen is in Colorado. I don't know. It's just like one of those things like maybe because it is a um uh deck nine property, but I don't know. I don't I don't see it. But then again, we were we were covering the um the leak of double exposure. We're like, there's no way that's gonna happen. And now it's just like everything's out the window at this point. Everything's away. So like y- yeah, we could see Alex Chen. Who knows? Tom Cruise is going to be in double exposure for all we know. Let's go. He could he very well could. Oh God, imagine that. He'll be outside like a Scientology church as well in the game or something in Vermont. Yeah. Be like, that'll be a sight to behold. Hey, and do you know what? Let me try and... it. Just starts running like, I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> yeah. Explosions. Bang, 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 bang. It's like, <laughs> do you know what as well, Adam? Hmm. I think she could very well be in it because think about all, like, all the stuff that led up to it. It's like they did the free comic book day. As well, mm-hmm. where it had like a comic book issue where Alex was there and they were kind of like vibing with Max and stuff. Then it's also like all the other little things that have been like shown in terms of detail. Even the ending of True Colors, one of them, Alex actually leaves the town, remember? Who says yeah. that she doesn't like, you know, go into a camper van with, with, um, with Steph and go. We even saw, we even saw Katie Benz in Colorado recently. She posted mm-hmm. a video as well about things. It's like, you can't rule out Erica Mori lives in Colorado. They wanted to do a little bit of a scene, a little bit of cameo. Yeah. We've got jumping universes and stuff. You know, can't rule it out here. There's also meant to be people with powers in the game as well. So this is pretty much going to be end game. Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 No. Not including us though. We should. We should be in there. We should be like the in the dodgeball where they have the commentators. Yeah. Like we should be those two people commentating the end game. Yeah. We'd be outstanding. Like fantastic smashing. I can do it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Be like Cotton from Pingy. So this is a bold move. Let's see if it pays off Max Caulfield. <laughs> uh, um, it's possible. Yeah. It's in the realm of possibilities. I don't see it happening. Alex Chen being double exposure, but it's I, the the whole realm of possibilities is out the window at this point. That's where I currently stand on it. So I'm not saying that she's not going to be there. I'm like, I'm, I, if anyone ever asks me anything, people do ask me like other things in like in private message and stuff. I'm like, I'm like I just can't like, you know, give you any answers anymore. Yeah. Like I'm seeing, I'm seeing Max Caulfield come back after like nine years, and Hannah Tell coming back. It's like, that's happening before GTA six. Yes. And that's like, my life has been shook. Nothing is guaranteed anymore. Things that, oh, anything is possible here. So yeah, I'm. I, I, I have a funny feeling we might see some shape, way, shape, or form of Alex Chen. I, I just, I don't know. There's something about it. Yeah. Which, but yeah, any, if anything, I do love Alex Chen. It's a happy birthday to Alex Chen. Obviously, again, thank you to the wonderful people who have created her, and then also as well to the wonderful actors who brought her to life, um, i.e., especially Erica Mori's performance as Alex Chen in mocap. Obviously, did fantastic work with that. Adam, another piece of news. Should yes, definitely. And by the way, by the way, guys, we're just sparring off these because there's smaller pieces of news in between, like our bigger topic, which you'll see. Um, so we got a Who is Safi video from the Life is Strange page. This was very similar to the Who is Max video, the Who is Alex Chen, who is um, Steph Gingrich. Very much a marketing play, as we've spoken about before. Yes. It's like a very much a marketing. New people come in. Obviously, Safi has a very hard um, position in this game, which is to basically <laughs> replace Chloe Price, as we've seen so far. Yeah. It's dividing a lot of people. She seems to be very forgotten. It was interesting to hear her backstory because this is not the main piece, Adam, because obviously if you watch it, you're going to be mm-hmm. like, you know, whatever. It's nothing else to that. There were two little pieces in here, and I'll let you kind of give a full perspective on it because I plucked them out. And by the way, this is just for all the people listening. Do follow our social media channels because basically I've turned them all into news aggregators. So if you've been following our news um you know all our feeds as well you'll start seeing that the news is going to start creeping into these episodes it's kind of keep you up to date it's like the undisputed source for deck nine don't know content at the minute so do go and follow them if anything so i'll take you to the first graphic adam which we tweeted and this is how max has obtained her power which is revealed in the who is safi video Mm. this is an actual quote from the line they say this is the main reason she's obtained her power so it says and i quote and when max tries to tap into her atrophied power to rewind time and undo disaster max ends up opening a parallel timeline that is the definitive answer they give for the time being yeah Mm. and then also as well in the video we see safi's mom in there who is none other than yasmin that is the character's name she is the president of caledon university which basically means she's max's boss if any because we know max is a professor there kind of gives confirmation they're the two main pieces but i wanted to ask you about the power thing because obviously we've spoken about it before about a lot of things and like even what Jace said to me on the Lost Records Journal, it's like, I want deeper exploration, deeper character evolution. I know some people have said, I want to see how the powers evolve. 
if that is the reason, for example, where the powers are, at, I'm a little bit, mm, yeah, considering you're trying to respect both endings at the minute. Yeah, it's um, I don't like the way Square Enix is like putting putting words in Michelle's mouth. Is what I'm saying. Um, it is weird that like you're the IP holder and yet you don't know anything about the IP. Uh, you're putting your own twist on things. So, uh, to make things canon like that, like how they obtain powers within the life change universe, it's kind of like I don't know. It's a sign of disrespect because I feel like I feel like Michelle has done a good job in saying that, like, hey, we're not going to tell you how they get their powers. You know, like mm-hmm. he's very much like. That that's yeah. something hidden. That's something you have to figure out on your own. And yet, like Square Enix is like, oh, this is how they get their powers, you know. Um, mm. So you know, it is what it is. But yeah, it's Square Enix is taking it in their own hands. It's just not needed, is it? It's like the powers are just like secondary to everything else. It's like you don't actually have to really explain why someone has powers, if anything. Yeah. It's like what you know. It's like it's that like kind of like scream thing where it's like. Where, where Billy's saying, like, you know, why does Hannibal like to eat people? We never knew at that point until Thomas Harris wrote the novel, and it's like, really? It's like, I know why you wrote it, because there's a reason why Thomas Harris had to write the novel, if anything. Mm-hmm. It's like, it kind of destroys the law of Hannibal Lecter, because the fact that he, you don't know why he eats people is even more scary. Um, and I don't like the fact that they're kind of like, this is the, the dumbed down, because like, in itself, they keep saying, we're going to respect both endings, both endings are part of it. But the other ending, which most people, do, like, you know, outside of the people who chose Chloe Price, the other ending is that Max just doesn't rewind time. She yeah. accepts that she can't do it. So it's like, it's, it's it's that problem that we've had since the beginning when we talked about it, where it's like, hang on a minute. It's like Max is saying, I need to rewind time. But it's like, hang on a minute. You said you wouldn't rewind time again. It makes your character sound dumb. It's like, it doesn't make sense. It's like Adam yeah. saying, I'm going to make a music song tomorrow and I'm not going to use a guitar. And the next minute he turns up with an electric guitar, starts yeah. playing the song. And I'm like, Adam, I'm like, hang on a minute. Yeah. I thought like, your music has evolved beyond just using an electric guitar in, in that sense. And I think that's my issue with like what I learned from here. Because I was like, maybe there's a bit more detail explored in here, but it just doesn't make any more sense. I think it it goes into this, this showing that like they had another character involved, but Square Enix said, make it yeah. Max. So they had to like write around Max, you know? It's just... That like, cause are you are you firmly in that position where it feels like Max could easily be taken out of the game and like it wouldn't make any difference? Yeah, no, it's it straight up was supposed to be not Max, and then like the Square Enix made that. Oh, sorry, uh, Square Enix made that call, and then they had, the, all the writers that they go and struggle to write around that. So, <laughs> yeah, it's, I'm, it's I'm pretty firm on that. Weird. Because, like, I, I, my, I was talking privately about this with someone, and I said to them, I was like, the easy way of justifying Max being in the game, for example, is if you basically rehash the first game, which might sound sacrilegious, but you rehash it in the sense that Chloe gets shot again, right? Mm-hmm. But then at the same time, Max gets thrown into a different timeline with Safi because of it. So that's how the rift happens. It's technically a little bit more central to the plot, isn't it? It gives at least mm-hmm. a bit more exposition. Again, I hate doing the fiction. I, I'm, I'm not a writer. I'm not something else. But I'm trying to create a substance with it like a, a meaning behind the the reason she has powers with it but like this for example is just like oh yeah well she just developed it it's like yeah what? yeah no and, and again and again it's my issue with the two endings as well you can't respect both endings it just doesn't make work it doesn't work at the minute from what we've seen so far i'm not convinced at the minute yeah no not not convinced at all but it is what it is it is what it is. And Adam, one more thing before we move on as well. I'm going to ask you as well. What do you think of Safi and her mum so far, Yasmin? By the way, I love in your, in your notes you wrote M-U-M, mum. Mum. Yeah, not <laughs> M-O-M, like a true American. You guys are so... Uh, did you see the New York mayor has brought in bins? Bins? It's like you don't leave your... Yeah, like a wheelie bin. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a trash can. Yeah, really and it's can. like you guys leave trash out on the street. It's like, what is wrong with that, man? It's like we do not, you don't, we don't do that in the UK, by the way. Pretty much any part of the UK, you put them in bins. You don't put your your stuff on the on the sidewalk as you see in America. Like, yeah. what's wrong with you guys, man? A lot. Uh, that's why this election <laughs> is just a, a, a giant trash uh, sidewalk. But back to this, um, uh, you know, cool. That's her name, Yasmin. But um, I would say I would say on the on the front of like okay, so she is the um, president's daughter, which puts a lot more 
um spin on things like why was she murdered mm-hmm. well it's like she's the president she is the college president's daughter so that, that puts a lot yeah. more spin she's not some random person so i think that's more a reveal than anything else mm-hmm. mm. and i think as well this bounces off your point where it seems like she's actually central to the story yeah she waits like you said that marx isn't like because her daughter she's the daughter of the university professor yeah the university professor is going to take a central role in the game as well in, from what we see so far it screams like she should be in the game yes max is kind of like just being in the game again guys we, we like we have we have different varying opinions especially with myself with double exposure because the stand is like here i've like, i've nothing but this game better be hitting this for me yeah if anything because if you're bringing max back i have high expectations up here so like when i'm talking about it and even adam as well we've had the issues with like square nicks and the the cash grab and like incentives we're still going to talk about this game we're still going to like play it we're going to still see what we get from it but there's like a lot of questions that's why we're being so i think we're probably the few voices where it's being quite critical in like in the sense of open mic at least on the on the internet but again we'll we'll see what comes on to that if anything um adam next piece of news yes definitely so again you should follow our feeds as well because this is another thing we tweeted because we found it as well so british indie folk artist matilda mann has hinted that they might be in the soundtrack for Life is Strange Double Exposure. So obviously we know that Tessa Rose Jackson's Illusion was in the reveal trailer for Double Exposure. And then people are wondering what the song is that Max is listening to in the extended gameplay trailer. So you see her put her headphones in when she leaves um, the area with Safi on the rooftop with um, Moses. And it seems like Matilda Mann is potentially the artist behind it because someone put on her Instagram, it's Gatman My Girl. Mm. No, so it's Gatman underscore my. They put, girl, please release the song Listen, uh, Max Listen to listen on her headphones in life is strange double exposure reveal stream i think um i kind of think you're the one singing but not 100 percent sure to be honest blink an eye if, um if it's you like this comment if it's you please release the song if it's you with eye emojis and matilda man responded with eye emojis yeah. which, um, i think it does seem to suggest it obviously not told us what the track name is we have no idea about it but again we have an idea of who's on the soundtrack we still got got all these people that i've you know pop up and stuff um very much seems like um if anything adam we are critical of like life is strange we're critical of like other things that Dead Island does. they have had a good track record with the soundtrack in my personal opinion i think mm. true colors soundtrack isn't as strong as before the storms because before the storm is on a different level with daughters but i think in terms of music selection mm. i still think that they are very good with like the songs they're picking so so far obviously with illusion in the reveal trailer i enjoyed and then even the song that's playing here for example in this scene i do enjoy so i'm kind of I do like the fact that they have this kind of wide ranging thing and they're picking indie artists as well, which I think hopefully you admire because you are an indie artist yourself, yes. or an indie musician, if anything. Yes. <laughs> Excuse me. No, uh, Matilda Mann is like um, excellent um, uh, indie artist as well, too. So if you haven't yet, I I actually prefer uh, You Look Like You Can't Swim is an EP that Matilda Mann has done. And that's a really good EP if you haven't listened to it yet. So I would love to hear margo on it i believe that's how you pronounce it but yeah no it's it's good that they're selecting like really um i don't want to say underground like just really like um uh not not too exposed artists you know they're they're not putting an ed sheeran in this game they're they're going like deep cut into this so matilda Mm -hmm. man is a great selection to put in here yeah are you familiar with matilda man I'm familiar, yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't say the biggest fan, yeah. but like biggest fan is in like I don't pay attention to every single one of her lists, but yeah, she's she's popped up in like my folk um my folk playlist. Ooh, is that how you discovered her through for your folk playlist? Yeah, I um I make sure that I try to like listen to as many like uh different playlists as possible so that Spotify can just feed me the most bizarre mm. crap possible. Um <laughs> But yeah, Matilda Man had, I believe. Oh, let me go on her Spotify real quick. Hold on. Uh, is she appears on artist playlist? Discovered on yeah. So she's on. She's on a good amount of um, Spotify playlists. Like she's on Morning Coffee, which I listen to. Um, acoustic hits, Zoo House. But yeah, she's on. God damn, she's on a lot of playlists actually. Um. But yeah, there's a there's a there's a good amount of Spotify playlists that she's on, like Indie Chill Out. Yeah, she's on Indie Chill Out, definitely. Uh with Remy Wolf. But yeah, no, like you, you just like listen to a bunch of Spotify playlists and pick up some artists. Yeah. 
No, that's really cool. No, because I like the fact that they're supporting the indie artists, if anything, the direction that they're going so far. Obviously, Tess Rose Jackson's in here so far. Matilda Mann's in it. We've had Steph Trivison on the channel, as we said before. She's an mm-hmm. indie artist. You know, Adam here is, himself is an indie artist. So, if anything, at least I'm going to give I'm going to give brownie points here, which is to both Square Enix and Detna. At least they're picking indie artists and people who get some kind of good exposure from this. Um, obviously, you can put Abby's music in this, as, as you should do as well. Um, Life is Strange team and also Castor Garden's got some new music out as well, which I imagine we'll get talking about later on and yes. spread the arts or something, which is available. So you should do check that out as well. You saw in the last comment in the last video where there's comments saying boo Castor Garden, <laughs> boo Adam Evil. And it's yeah, like, it's boo to, Adam Evil, listen, not listen. Castor Garden. Yeah. Yeah, it's boo, boo Adam Evil. And it's like, listen to Castor Garden on Spotify. By the way, as well, actually, Adam, here's a weird one. Yeah. Hmm. When I left that comment on there, which in itself is quite funny because it's got five up, up, thumbs up. Yeah. yeah. I tried to leave that comment loads of times and I put at the end of it, I put, listen to Castor Garden's album on Spotify. It wouldn't post it. But as soon as I got rid of the um, Spotify part, it, it posted it. That's weird. That's interesting. Yeah. Which is a weird algorithm thing from YouTube that, because it's like, yeah. I think it's because it was trying to suggest I'm telling them to go somewhere else. Wouldn't do it. And I kept posting it because I was trying to do it before we pu- published the video. Yeah. I was like, what are you guys doing? Remove that one part of it post it i'm like yeah it's the same thing as tiktok if you if you say like my music is out now um or like available here it just it doesn't share it because that that tells them get off tiktok and go over to spotify so it's it's, yeah it's so dumb dude it's really dumb (sighs) it's so infuriating it's just like if tiktok if that's your whole thing then make tick then make tiktok a music platform then you know, like I'd be yeah. happy to say, like, "Hey, it's available now here on TikTok. Go listen to it on TikTok." I would love to say that, but it's not. Like, it's not a music platform, so of course I'm going to say, "Like, hey, it's available now." You know, I don't know. It's, it's so dumb. It's awful, isn't it? Because like my favorite part of the the interview we did, Steph Trivison, there's a, like literally a time somewhere it says the frustrations of being a musician. Yeah, it's, it's like that was, that was a great. That was a great section there. Yeah. And it's, it's like, because it's like, for me, it was like, when I was listening to it, I was like, yeah, it's like, I've heard this from Adam. It's like, Adam is like, literally outlined all these points you're saying. It's like, I get it. I completely get it with yeah. you. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we'll keep an eye out on more of the soundtrack. As we said, we'll give you updates of who's in it and whatever else. But we'll move into our other piece of news here, which is from Lost Records, Bloom and Rage. Yeah. Yay. Hooray. You don't know Montreal. So I thought this was a really cool idea with some, a little bit of caveats as well, which we'll, we'll talk about here. Um, so I'm going to open the website I'll put in the link, Adam, which is a designer poster or sticker to feature in Lost Records, Bloom and Rage. Mm. So it's your design, our game, calling all artists and creatives. We're hosting a contest where your design could feature in our game, Lost Records, Bloom and Rage. The development team themselves will go through your submissions and pick the, their favorites to be placed somewhere in the game. So let's get right down to the exciting stuff. So you have three options for submissions. Option one, design a poster for a fictional 90s Riot Girl, Riot's Girl or rock, goth, metal, grunge band. Mm -hmm. Option two is design a poster for a fictional 90s film. Option three is design a sticker that could feature, that could be in a 90s punk or skateboarding magazine. So very much all the vibes that we've seen so far, all the nostalgic stuff in there. Just to clarify as well, some of the submission rules, there is one here that says there's no AI or computer assisted generation, which you cannot use, which very much agree with. However, there will be one caveat here, which we do need to make people aware of as well, which other people have tweeted about, which is the fact that you are signing over what you've done here. So yeah. you can't like, you know, you won't get paid for it. But again, this is a community competition. But again, you won't get paid for it. So whatever time you're putting towards it, it's going to be just your own work for it. But you are putting use to the developers to give it. So it does say as well. So by submitting your design, by submitting a design, participants give don't nod their right to use their work, artwork in Lost Records, Bloom Rage, and in related promotional materials without compensation. Developers also reserve the right to make minor modifications to any submissions to ensure that the visual visual can be coherently integrated into the game. So there is a caveat there as well, which you should read. And again, all of the submission details are on the online. You can go and check it out there. Mm. Um, I like this, Adam. I hope as well, if you're listening to this Don't Know Montreal, that Lost Records Journal has a reference in there somewhere. Yes. You know? Yeah, Easter definitely. egg, you know, <laughs> little nice Easter egg that we can put in there. You know, it's just an option where she's like on a podcast or something listening to it. But I, Adam, I thought this was kind of a cool idea because at least with them delaying the game and stuff, at least they can kind of open up to these kind of ideas. I don't know if it was planned, if anything, in, in advance anyway, but mm-hmm. I do like the idea that this is kind of like, it's very much an indie game as we've seen so far because it is just don't not doing this, mm-hmm. but it has the indie vibes of it and they're kind of like getting people engaged with it, which is quite nice for would-be artists um in itself 
but uh, yeah guys get involved in it if anything there is an option to create a poster you could create a poster of casting garden yeah definitely in his 90s version that would be cool i wish i could draw and i wish i could design better but like um no good good for anybody i did share it to a couple of artist friends that i have so um to to get them involved but yeah uh hopefully they submit their entries and we can get a good competition going yeah for sure that'd be really quite cool that'd mm-hmm. be really quite cool so yeah do check that out but that's again another little piece of news adam next piece of news yes definitely so we're coming towards our main topic anyway soon but this is a little piece this was from the esrb which is now rated life is strange double exposure a lot of jargon in here i'm not going to pull out a lot of it because a lot of it is quite repetitive and it's just kind of like esbr just gives it like a, a summary usually of like you know little things for people who have never played the game that obviously rate it but there were a couple of little details in here which i wanted to bring up adam hmm. so it says here as players progress through the storyline they are presented with a dialogue and action choices some cho- um, some choices cause characters to engage in acts of violence a character shooting someone in the shoulder Mm. that could be anything that could be safi being shot that could also be max being shot in one of the clips that you've seen uh blood is depicted on one character um character's clothes on the ground after shooting that is pretty much safi the game contains some suggested material black and white photos of female characters fully clothed lying in vulnerable positions two characters playing smash or pass dialogue referencing sex a high ratio of effability faculty i'm, not gonna, I'm trying to dodge saying swear words um did you get laid even once um, during the course of the game, some of the characters are seen smoking marijuana. The words F, S, and A, all swear words, appear in the game. Interesting little bit of details, but that was the one line, Adam, as you can see in the graphic outline, which is the game has some contains some suggested material, black and white photos of female characters. So it's suggesting mm. that potentially dark room references will be made in this game, which would make sense with Max. However, big questions about how much is shown, considering the way they're telling the story. It's a little bit like are we going to mm-hmm. see like full blown expositions and stuff, or is it just going to be vague passing by moments? Uh, I think it might be a big part of the story just because um, I don't want to say I don't, I, I really hope it's not the same as like, you know, rehashing uh, the dark room, but you know, it, it is, you know, it's in there. Like it's, it's in there like uh black and white photos. So like, I think it's going to be a big part of the story, unfortunately. Yeah, I have a weird feeling that they're going to do like flashback scenes and like, um, like just like moments of like. I think that's where you might get your more, more your Chloe expositions and stuff, where it's through flashbacks and like, mm-hmm. you know, references to like previous stuff. It seems like that's the way they're going to integrate it because again, if we're making that theory that Max isn't necessarily the the main character of this game originally or like long term, or if like you can take her out the game, the only way you can kind of make all these references are through flashbacks and kind of her history. Which again, are they going to be deep and intricate? Or are they going to be vague? yeah some big questions there um but yeah i think if anything there there are some like details in there which like you know for deck nine if anything is very much like you know playing smash and pass like that's kind of like one of those almost like two truths and a lie that we saw in before the storm um you know dialogue referencing pretty like high proficiency work like let's let's see how this plays out i'm quite intrigued by like at the from what we've seen so far the early offset of this oh yeah like uh we don't know anything yet but the fact that it's in the ratings board and there's marijuana references i don't know man this could be a pretty edgy game if if we're really playing our cards right that marijuana as you said yeah it could be it could be a pretty volatile game mm. but yeah we'll keep you up to date with when we learn more but i think like i think we're going to see splashbacks from that another little bit as well here which was a little image that i created for the page and adam's got it here it's max and chloe it was a photo that was shown so it was from a double explosion clip and it shows max and chloe very similar to the life of strange 2 um photo that we've seen in a way um but a little bit slightly different so in itself chloe doesn't have her tattoo blacked up as we see in life is strange oh, yeah. it's a different photo it's a different photo let me emphasize this because people are jumping on it obviously it's a very different photo we're just implying it's very similar because obviously chloe has a bit of blue hair at the bottom so her hair dye is fading at that point mm. compared to the one which is fully green but it just shows you a very small time frame and it is there a reason why it's like not covered up in that short time frame is it an inaccuracy because people have been very critical of deck nine's inaccuracy of get um things in before the storm or is it intentional is this a different potential alternative timeline that we're here is something happening hmm. no I, th- I just think it's a lack of detail i think i think it's just <laughs> a lack of detail if anything else no i don't think anything deep is going on it's just a lack of detail from the artists 
Yeah, yeah. I think if I think if anything, if they want to kind of like avoid that as well, they, they should make some kind of reference in the game where it's like this is just before she did it or something, where she's like blacked up a tattoo, which I think then at least at that point mm-hmm. you can get away with it. Yeah. Um, which hopefully that is a good way of doing it because at least I, I think if anything as we've spoken about and we've been critical, we've been talking about things, they have such high expectations on their shoulders as well. And people mm-hmm. are excited and rightfully they should be excited. We're obviously excited about Hannah Tell going back and, you know, doing performances. But that comes with it like a you know, an expectation up here and then also for people to deliver because like Adam has always said that Deck Nine would be great making their own IP and like yeah, making their own creative storytelling. But can they do basically now, which is for me almost like seen as an impossible task from a different development team and studio to make this great Max Caulfield story and have it the same substance. Mm. Those are the big questions to be asked. And obviously, again, it's like we're seeing Chloe Price here and there. I don't know if people are going to be set up for a bit of disappointment, Adam, personally speaking, in terms of seeing Chloe in the game. I don't think she's going to be that important no. in it, personally speaking. Um, just especially if you're, again, respecting both endings, because technically one of the endings, Chloe Price ain't even there. So it's like yeah. the game's not going to be big enough for that. Um, but yeah, I, I thought we'd bring that up. And if, anything else before we move into our final topic? No, I just don't think it's as deep as people want to think. I think it's just a lack of a lack of detail, nonetheless. Yeah, well, yeah, I, I, I hope that we're wrong about that, if anything. I hope that there is some kind of like justification for that, if anything, because, again, and any any little move is going to be critically analyzed, if anything, for the time being. Adam, last piece of news, which kind of relates to your Juson vinyl as well, but completely different as well in the sense that, Pre-orders are now open, so you can buy a physical PS5 edition of Juson and the art book individually, um, or together with a signed vinyl in a deluxe box set. So this is the Ballast, Bal- Ballast edition? Mm. Ballast? I'm going to say Ballast edition, which has been produced. It is now available for pre-order on Pix and Love, which you can go and check. I do need to pre-order it today, which is my plan. It's $150 for the big one, which I'm kind of keen. Um, I'm going off Adam's recommendation here because he vibed off Juson. He loves it. He's got the vinyl. Uh, when Adam says that for a don't, don't know game, I'm giving giving it a full thing for that. So in itself, here's a quick press release, which was that in partnership with Don't Nod, Pixel and Love is pleased to announce the physical edition of Juice On for PlayStation 5 is now up for pre-order. Overflowing the mystery and poetry, um, overflowing with mystery and poetry, boasting a beautiful art direction and an enchanting soundtrack crown with the award for best sound universe during the Pegasus 2024 ceremony. Juice On offers a truly unique experience. Um, this is just extra details. It's releasing in October 2024. Um, extend you saw an experience with this max magnificent deluxe box set presented in a large format cardboard box. This edition num- um, number to 300 copies contains four lithographs um, as well as imposing 300 page making of art book, including design sketches and unpublished interviews with the developers. Damn. A fascinating dive into that into the heart of the creative process music lovers will also appreciate appreciate the intoxicating ost of the game in the form of double vinyl autograph by composer gelmer gelmer ferran uh, apologies about that i've got yeah it's a it's a I french name and i i couldn't know i didn't know how to pronounce it either i'm gonna apologize for that but a very talented composer who's doing that so it's a pretty licious looking um collector's edition if anything um, I think if you're a Don't Nod fan, you'll enjoy this. Obviously, it's quite high-end priced, if anything. But, for example, that is quite insane, as Adam reacted to it, which is a 300-page making of art book as well in there, which is, like, massive compared to anything I've seen before. And, and I've got my own collector's edition, but that's massive in terms of the content. And, obviously, a vinyl as well, which it looks mm. quite gorgeous in there. Adam's bought the vinyl as well, which he's really enjoying at the minute. So um, I would 100% recommend checking that out. I'm going to pick it up, Adam. Good. This is going to be one of my games I will be playing later this year obviously it comes out very much smack bang in the uh double exposure season so yeah. i'll be managing my time there but i'm i'm very keen on picking it up because you have given it big approval and i think well it's it it's coming out like december 6th so it will be pretty much after uh oh uh, yes yeah. yes yes oh sorry i was looking at the um just the standard ps5 version yeah there, which was uh, on october but it looks pretty cool, though. I think, like, Juson, you know, I wish that more people would give it a bit more eyes, if anything. It just doesn't seem to be talked about. Again, it's that brand, you know, brand cutting power that you have and, like, IP cutting power. It's just difficult to kind of get people to lay their eyes on it. But I will be picking up. I was going to ask Adam this, but Adam's already got the vinyl. He's, he's sorted for that, so he's already in there, and he's also got it on there. But, Adam, not on your Xbox, is it, this, the physical edition? No. Philly it... Spencer's just putting the prices on Games Pass instead. And Isn't I think he? it's uh I think it's only the UK version too. 
Pretty sure. Yeah. PS5. <laughs> Which is good, dude. Like, I'm I'm very happy about this. I think um he says. I, I really wish it was more than just a thousand copies, though. I really want more people to like get their hands on this. Like I really I really wish it was just like a a retail release of Jusant. Mm. You know what I mean? Because like I think more people need to get their eyes on this because it is a very fantastic game. It's a very good uh sound quality to it. Uh, it is a shame that it's only a thousand copies of the physical edition, but you know, good for them. Uh, good for PS5 European users, but um, yeah. yeah, I think I think people need to get their eyes on Jusan, definitely. I agree with you because, like, you've 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 given it a glowing endorsement, and you played Banishers as well. So he's like, you've been more on top of the the recent run of Don't Know games, and I, I don't, and even Harmony as well. You haven't been disappointed by really any of them for like no. what you're paying price wise and like what you've got in terms of the quality so there's a lot of potential with don't know especially with like oh, yeah. hopefully these things start picking up more eyes and stuff but like more eyes on the product but yeah it's interesting to see it's on ps5 obviously the reversible cover is quite nice and just the standard version which i like and then obviously the detail attention in the big edition which is really quite cool which i will be looking at potentially picking up if anything but yeah adam by the way as well are you um still signed up to games pass uh for now uh you you saw the price hikes yeah Oh yes, that's the first thing I was thinking. I was like, like there's, "There's Adam's boy, Philly boy." Yeah, so he, I he loves the gamers. I went from Ultimate to just the console version, which is ten ninety nine, uh, and I think they said yeah. like that that your um, that the price will stay the same for console only, which is ten ninety nine. Um, so I'm gonna go down to that, but yeah, twenty dollars a month, man. They're just picking it back up with the <laughs> like the dumbest tears, dude. Like, oh, you are shooting yourself in the foot with this one. Oh my god! Yeah, I I I think that's the problem with it is because the more expensive it gets, for example, and you can play all the games you want, mm -hmm. but at the same time, I sometimes think like it, with that twenty dollars, I would just buy a game, so you could like buy yeah. Jusant, for example, and I think that would yep. be my one takeaway from the month, and I'd play the same other game repeatedly. Uh, that's my problem with Games Pass as a formula. Mm. It's like where you're on the ten, you're on the ten dollar ninety nine version. That's fine. But it's like with with for example that I just take the twenty dollars, be like, here you go, don't nod, enjoy it. It's it's going straight to you as a publisher. And a developer, I spent $20 and mm -hmm. instead of like having the ultimate pass where you try and play five or six games a month, especially when you get older, as we've talked about before, the age comes with it as well. And it's just difficult to keep yeah, playing games, if anything, at this age. Um, but yeah, I think um, I'm going to keep an eye out on it. When I get it, I'll um, show people, I'll kind of even show some of those pages as well, which has the um, the interviews that we don't know as well. So if any other details come up, I will bring them up. Um, Adam, main topic? Yes, definitely. So... A lovely main topic here. Um, where we're done with the news, so obviously a lot of news there. This topic, Adam, who is Safi's killer? Mm. Let's talk about double exposure. This is the big mystery with the game. Mm. It's no, 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 sorry. It's not a murder mystery game. It's a supernatural murder supernatural. mystery game. Keep, yes. keep saying this to people. It's emphasizing the market. It's a supernatural murder mystery game, yeah? Yes. This is an overarching plot of the game, yeah? It, we're going to find out who Safi killer is. Do you want me to go first, or do you want to throw your prediction out there? Where uh, do you stand on this? I, I think it's Pompidou. It's Pompidou, straight up. Pompidou. Pompidou. Yeah. So there's some questions there. Not not in the sense of the fact that he might be killed in in the game, because I I kicked him over the the van essentially. I was like, here you go, have the bone, mm. get run over. But no, <laughs> yeah. More in the sense of we have to ask a question: How does the dog have a gun? Uh, well, how how are we tripping into? different realities you know maybe in one reality the dog has thumbs so that's just too much man that's, that's too much, too much. That. i always love it when people like <laughs> like we watch like a sci-fi movie and someone's just like like the, the one little detail is like oh snakes can't talk i'm like we're in a sci-fi realm you weren't like exposed <laughs> with like rocket ships on rollerblades but like here we are like oh a snake can talk like that's your limit i for Oh, it's a God. fair point. Yeah. So dumb. It's a fair goal, like. <laughs> So yeah, no, Pompidou has thumbs in the reality and shoots Safi. Yeah. Oh. No, I can't I can't see this dog. Maybe it's mushroom. It could be mushroom. It could be. Uh After, yeah. Like you watch that long cut scene. <laughs> like yeah, uh, mushroom comes back to life after being eaten by a cougar and um shoots Safi. That's my that's my take. I think that could happen. Yes. So should I throw the quick theory out, which I think most people agree with? Yes. That is Max. 
but in a different reality. Yeah, but we're going I, I don't, Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban kind of deal. Yeah, because it's, it's I, I think that I think you've summed it up perfectly. That actually, which is the the, the time turner, the, the time turner sequence, time turner, or was it called? Whatever it's the time thing she keeps using as well, where she goes back in time, Hermione. I think mm. we're in that sense where I think it, I don't think it's an evil Max, by the way. I think it's just Max in a different in a universe, and she's done something where she shoots Safi in some way, shape, or form. It's going to go like Terminator style. We mm. start like creating like a, almost like a perpetual cycle of things that happen, and you have to like disrupt the cycle in some way, shape, or form. Um, because it just seems to suggest as well. Because we spoke about with the developer who, like, you know, when we re read extracts from that, like Safi sat on the bench here, so she's not standing up. For example, like they yes. said, like we wanted Safi to sit down. It seems like something's happened there, which I, I don't think. Like, I, I don't. I don't think the idea is going to basically be like it's an evil character. So it's not Jefferson who's broke out of prison and like jumped yeah. through time and like. I I think that that in itself is just stupid. Oh God, if it's true, Jesus Christ, that in itself yeah. sounds stupid. I think the idea is going to be it's going to go into that vein of games we've played, which is like Bioshock Infinite, um, films like Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban terminator it's going to go down that line where it's going to be something's happened in a timeline which is starting to bleed into another timeline and causing impact with it so i think in itself i think the the theory which is that max has shot safi makes sense because i don't think maybe max is shooting at safi it's mm. more about someone who's like she's shooting at someone else and the bullet goes and hits safi in some way shape or form instead like maybe like she's jumped into a different timeline got to that moment where the exact same thing's about to happen in some way, shape, or form, she's about to shoot at someone. A timeline rift opens up again, and it shoots that Safi from that universe. If anything, okay. I feel like see how see how difficult this is. <laughs> I feel like you're. Um, I feel like you have a lot of faith in. Um, I think you have a lot of faith in what what we can do in terms of writing. For it's it to all make sense. <laughs> Uh, I don't agree yeah. to that at all. <laughs> it's like, I don't think it's Max at all. Um, yeah. No, I don't know. Mm. It's not going to be Max because then like, then Max has to be in prison. I, I think there's just too much convoluted, like, okay, what happens from there kind of thing? Like, does Max go to prison? Does Max uh, now have to be so traumatized that she is the killer? I, no, it's not going to be Max. I don't agree with that. Ooh, I think so we have a higher chance that... of Pompidou being the killer than Max. Wow, that's that's a boast. Because like, my mind obviously isn't like she kills her on purpose or something like that. I've seen people say like it could be Chloe Price, and no, it's just not going to happen. Like, well, it's, it's not like Max is going to say whoopsie, and then like that's how the game ends. It's like the Seinfeld, like boom, 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 boom. Maybe that is just French. <laughs> no, I, I don't think it's like I don't think it's like an evil Max. I think it's some other confliction that she's caused where it's another because obviously she's, again the story they keep building on the fact that she can break open up timelines mm. so she's like going to she can open a timeline where safi's alive so what's happened to that max that's in that timeline what's going on there it's like i have questions where it's like she's it seems like it seems like she, it could be a moment where she's going to shoot at someone mm -hmm. and it's like then that something happens there which like could potentially hit a Safi in her timeline or something. It's gonna, it's gonna be something ludicrous because otherwise, all I'm gonna ask you is, do you think it's a new character that shot? Yeah, Safi. Yes, definitely. Really? Yes. Uh, because like, here's the thing we have to keep in mind is that Safi is the president of the university's daughter, right? Mm -hmm. So that's an important detail to write in. Like, she, Safi is not just some random student; she is the president's daughter. So there has to be a lot of um, exposure to that, you know, you know pun intended. So hey. it's probably somebody who has like something else to Yasmin. And so I think Yasmin has a lot to, is it Yasmin, her mother's name? Yeah. Yeah. Yasmin is um, it, uh, like has some secret that she's keeping to keep the university alive. And I think Max is going to uncover what Yasmin is covering up. So why was her daughter the one that died? I think it has to do with a lot of that, with what is the secret being kept within the university that is fueling the fire to kill the daughter? Yeah, yours makes a lot more sense than mine. <laughs> yeah, it's not, it's not yeah, going to be like a Max Prisoner of Azkaban kind of thing. I'll, I think there's too much we can convolute. Do you think it's a very simplistic? Like, it's just basically based on the fact that it's going to be like almost, 
she's a, such an influential figure at Caledon, like Yasmin, mm -hmm. that's going to have some kind of like story about obviously her, someone's got like a hair out on her or something, goes after Safi instead. It's kind mm -hmm. of, it's very like a, a simplistic story in that sense, where it's like all based in that. Occam's in that. Razor, baby. Occam's Razor. But, but it's because they keep building on that supernatural motif, though. That's why I keep thinking like it's going to be like Max from like almost like an alternative timeline kind of thing, where it's like, that supernatural part they keep adding on to every like sentence of it it's like if anything like, it's I, a it's an alternative timeline to chloe you know and then she has to have mm -hmm. the she has to have like max has to have this like decision to make that like do you turn in chloe but it's not actually chloe kind of thing you know like yeah. that i don't think it's max though i really don't think it's max Oh, that is interesting, actually. That is interesting. I didn't, I, I've been, like, going down the, the straight rabbit hole where it's, like, it's going to be, like, almost Bioshock Infinite-esque slash, no. you know, what Square Enix has been doing with, like, with like Final Fantasy. Because, like, again, I've always said this as well. I might make a video at some point. Go and play the Final Fantasy VII Rebirth remake kind of games as well. You'll see where Square Enix, for me, if anything, is going down that direction, if anything, at the minute. Mm -hmm. um, and also, obviously, the comics exist and stuff. It felt, like, almost like there's going to be some kind of, like, supernatural, like, moment where it's where you said the prisoner ask about thing where max mm. does something and it's like that's the kind of knock-on effect from it but i'd be very surprised if they do what you're saying where it's just like a very yeah. simple kind of like which again then yeah. also would make sense as well but oh my god it's like oh but like why why write her in as the president's daughter you know what yeah I mean? true why isn't it just like a regular professor no it's specifically yes um yasmin is the pre uh president and safi is the daughter of the president like why yeah. why write that when it when it wouldn't pay off i whereas the president has a lot to do with the day-to-day -day, the big picture stuff and to keep mm -hmm. the university going there's got to be something to that yeah and and, and as as, we, as i mentioned earlier as well when when you've spoken about it as well it seems like those two characters are built baked into the story so it's like you can't pull either one out at the moment because it mm -hmm. seems like they're going to be central like there's gonna be something quite central to the story, if anything, with that. Um, but I, I just don't know. I feel like something. Some, oh god! It's yeah. just. Like, I hope that they do something which adds like a bit more flavor to it, if anything. Like, because I think they've they've kind of suggested that characters with powers can be in that game. That's why I said to you, maybe Alex Chen could make an appearance in some way, shape, or form. Sure. Like passing by or something. But it's like, do you think that the, the person who shot Safi has powers then? Because again, like we have no no, foot, no footprints, no footprints there when it happens yeah there's no kind of like uh, there's no kind of like inkling of anyone being seen there mm -hmm. so it seems like almost like that person who's shot her has powers in some way shape or form yeah and it's like maybe maybe not um i don't think they have powers i just think that it, it we're gonna have to have a mystery of kind of like um you know uh like what there's there's like that 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 riddle of just like hey you you lead into a room where like the guy died and there's a puddle of water on the floor and there's a chair what happened kind of deal uh there's like a murder mystery where it has to do with like a puddle right uh really? murder yeah I wonder, what, I wonder what that clue is so puddle on the floor chair of the room Mur murder mystery. slip on the puddle fall on the chair and die <laughs> puddle. <laughs> i'm being terrible at this uh let me just uh look this up real quick because it, it kind of goes into like what you're saying with like no footprints i think it's going to be one of those yeah um on so i know there's one about ice there's one about drinking with ice cubes where yeah like, i think it's an fbi riddle right like, like obviously i think it's like the man drinks his drink really fast and dies because oh no uh yeah so sorry it's um it's the man, yes actually that's the, the one i'm thinking about uh oh, it was the ice cube one yeah yeah yeah, it's just uh, like Jack and Judy were lying on the floor dead. There's a puddle of water and broken glass on the floor. How did they die? And it's just um, I forget what the oh show on the floor and glass broken. Yeah, Jack and Judy were lying on the floor dead. There's a puddle of water and broken glass on the floor. How did they die? And the answer is Jack and Judy are two goldfish that swam in a small aquarium placed on the shelf. One afternoon, a cat <laughs> sneaked into the room through the window, hit the aquarium, and fell off the, off the shelf, broke the ground. So it's like one of those mur murder mysteries where it's like there's no footprints, but, you know, Safi was shot. Uh, how was she killed? And just like sniper rifle. You know, like <laughs> with Pompidou at the end of it. <laughs> yeah, that's going to happen. Isn't it? Pompidou with a sniper rifle. Yeah, hmm, interesting.
Yeah. Well, that would be interesting, that, from that. My favorite is just that something's going to happen where she, like, she opens up timelines as well. That's the entire point of, like, her power now. It's like she's splitting timelines. So it's almost like I thought she would, like, fire a bullet at someone. And then somehow, like, a, a timeline has been ripped open. The bullet goes through and bang, hits Safi. And it's like, oh, no, damn, like, everything else with it. Yeah. Um, but yours is, yours is very much more grounded in reality compared to mine, if anything. Or here's um, another one. I, um, a man is found dead uh, in a puddle of blood and water on the floor of an otherwise empty, locked room with no windows. How could this have happened? Uh, what? You drank poison? Uh, he stabbed himself with an icicle. <sighs> yeah. Uh, now, no, yeah, of course. I don't of think course. that Safi is her own killer. I don't think we're <laughs> going to go into suicide uh, in this no. game. That, I don't know. I don't know if they're going to go down that route. But I, I think it's going to be one of those where it's just like, I don't think it's going to be as convoluted as like Evil Max, but I think it's going to be like one of those like murder mystery, like kind of trivia puzzle kind of deals. Yeah, because like, but that's that's the thing for me. Because I, I don't think it's going to be Evil Max, if anything. Mm -hmm. like, I don't think there's an evil. I don't think there's an evil version of her in terms of like even in. It's just Max universe. who listens to Metallica. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that would make it that, that. Yeah, she is evil then at that point. Yeah, um, but yeah, I just. I just I'm kind of like confused about what, how they're going to go with it. Because like, even in itself as well, do you know that Loretta Rice character where it's like people being like, it's Rachel, doing them, they're jumping up and out, it's Rachel Amber, it's this. And Adam's like, I've listened to Kylie's voice, it's not her. And it's like, I'm yeah. like, it's not Kylie. It's like, anyone can I edit IMDb. But it's like, even for example of that, I have a theory where it's almost like the, the art direction is intentional for her to look like Rachel Amber. Because it's almost like in the sense that I feel like they might try and make like some kind of coincidental kind of thing where it's like, oh, there is like a, a kind of like that character in the same like at least facial wise if anything mm. well it's just in a different storytelling sense of like a different this character is completely different but i think like they've intentionally made her look very similar to that because i think they might try and draw parallels on that in this game where it's like i think that she might even at caledon cross paths with a nathan prescott that in itself i'll see as well in the game if we're going to do go down your route as well mm -hmm. we will 100 percent cross paths with a red herring which is like a mac-esque Nathan Prescott character who's going to be like, oh, you're the killer, you're the killer. Because it's yeah. going to be very similar to the first Life is Strange. This is like a bit more elevated, if anything, where it's like the murder mystery is at the front of it. It's almost, again, like True Colors, they've gone down that direction where it's like making it a murder mystery. But I think you probably are swinging me here as well in the sense that very, I think that obviously, I think the Caledon University part will play a bigger role in this. It's mm -hmm. almost like um, Typhon-esque, which we saw in Life is Strange, yes. True Colors, where it's like, like they were like, oh, it's the big archering kind of people. They're the people that are responsible for games. That it feels like that's going to head in might this direction. Which might actually be a, a cry for help from Deck Nine. Just like, hey, it wasn't us. It was the um, big corporation. Wink, wink, kind of deal. <laughs> it's like it's not us. It's the uh, big corporation. I wonder what big corporation is under all of this. Hmm. <laughs> Imagine if that was actually what Typhon represented as well. <laughs> and, they was being, and, they being, and they were being so on the nose about it as well. Like they were being, that would be like quite, that would be quite like funny. Like in the longer run, if anything. Like and then they're going to make another online. game where a big corporation is actually the one murdering people. It's like, hmm, I wonder which big corporation we're talking about. Hmm. Oh God. Yeah. It, it, yeah. Because it's you know, like even in itself as well. Have you seen all the costumes they've been releasing? We're posting on some of the social yes, feeds. Have, Max's yeah. outfits. That that screams during the leak where it was like um, we were shown microtransaction stuff, like you know, like little things mm -hmm. you could buy in the game and stuff. And it's like now nah, we're just going to put it now, huddle it up into. It's like it's almost like Life is Strange is going to go live service a little bit, but it's like yeah. now nah, we're just going to you know push it into the game now because we've changed direction. Like things are starting to make a lot of sense in terms of the thing with that. Cause I'm, I'm intrigued by it, but it's like, that's the, I, I think that's the game you're going to get in, in the sense of like this very discussion about Safi's killer. I, I, even though it's like a big conversation, I, I think it's almost going to come down to either, for example, I'm going to be right where it's like, it's a max old max, but it's like old max in the sense that some time meddling has happened and that has caused a, a ripple effect into this timeline or something, or it's just going to be what you said, where it's going to be like a straight up, cluedo murder mystery game where it's like you know the professor is at the kind of focal point of it because they're the head honcho her daughter's been killed because mm. obviously again you tied significance in there and it'll be either a new character or it's going to be like and maybe a 
returning character with some kind of like element to it but again mm. i think like this is almost positioned this game as like a soft reboot because i don't think it's going to be chloe price jumping through timelines or rachel amber or nathan prescott or mark jefferson because it just sounds that's when it goes into the territory of fan fiction really bad writing really because there's no justification for this there's no inkling for any of these characters to have that stuff but it feels like it's going to go down that route where it's going to be like you know almost a character we know if anything very much standard lake formula that we've seen with true colors because it was a character we knew it was jed we like yeah. got to that point it's jettison boom shoots alex it, we we kind of have that motif with it but i don't think like I, I think that people are kind of you need to understand from my perspective when we've been talking about adam it's like it this game is more about just being a straight up murder mystery game if anything it's not the same deep level of intricacy of like a character development of max caulfield or you're gonna see chloe price back in there with like loads of like you know up and down jumping up and down we're gonna have celebration moments it's just straight up like a murder mystery game i think like that's the reveal of it and i don't think i'm gonna be that blown away by like a twist if anything I've, in itself you played a lot of games i don't think the twist is going to be as big for example like a bioshock no those games are like built those games are built that's a ken twist, levine they are style built. of writing yeah, or even like, i i feel like if michelle co was writing this i feel like we could see a max but it's it's the fact that it's like it's not michelle co it's not ken levine it's not even um kojima writing this game you know, I think that's why you're thinking of like the whole Max thing because yeah. you're such a Ko Kojima stan. They're just like, <laughs> I bet they could do this. I'm like, it's not Kojima, man. Kojima's not writing this. <laughs> Sorry to tell you. Yeah, that'd be quite interesting. Do you know what? As well, if if it was Kojima, Pompidou would have been the killer. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's gonna, like he's gonna be like, and then like uh, Pompidou's gonna look right at the screen and like uh, defect all your save files onto your system. But yeah. <laughs> I think, do you know what, that actually, no, you're so spawn about that. That's actually such an interesting point you made that. Because, like, when you say even, even I think if you gave that project to Michelle and said, like, can you make this, like, multiverse kind of, like, almost jumpy up and down stuff. We know his backgrounds with, like, sci-fi and stuff. He's, like, read Stephen King. He's, like, got that kind of flair with it. And it's not necessarily his style, per se, mm -hmm. with the other games. But as you said with the first Life is Strange, if you see how things are t tied in in terms of, like, the Rachel Amber plot line, all the other stuff that makes sense and i can actually my theory would be on that line where it's like mm. yeah actually you've kind of won me over a little bit here i think it might just be what you said where it's like a a straight up new character you said it was new character wouldn't you new character that shot yeah. Yeah. yeah straight up new character that has some kind of agenda against kaladin or the profess the president of kaladin and then it's kind of like that's the reveal of it if anything because she seems to be investigating things it seems like the the, the rift of the timeline where she's opening up from what we've seen so far that's just like extra little bits if anything it's like it just seems to be like adding on like to kind of figure out what the mystery is if anything i don't think people are going to be jumping through timelines like we've seen in um in like the comics or you know some like extravagant kind of like thing um in the in the franchise but yeah it's, it's uh, yeah i'm like it god i'm trying to find like who's actually writing it because we know the directors of the games uh, and I believe yeah. it's two directors uh, going to be directing uh, Double Exposure, but I don't know who the writers are. It's just the one. Yeah, so it's John Str John Stouder, John Stouder, who's yes. who's the game director on this game. And then Felice Khan was in the stream, and she was the narrative design. She's narrative director, narrative design director. So I think like, I, yeah, I kind of get what you mean. Where it's like it's two directors. It's like almost like, but they're branched in in different yeah. things, aren't they? Um, yeah, that's the yeah, thing. A... Uh, so Felice Khan. Right. Um, oh, is is there a buzzing? Oh, it's just me. It's me. Uh, so Felish <laughs> Khan, I want to see like what else has she written, right? Uh, ETS True Colors. Yeah, exactly. So game. Well, um, Adam as well. Um, Mallory Littleton left and she worked on it. And uh, it yes, true. Below. Yeah. So it's like, but that's what I mean. Like we're not we're not getting into like writers who are like Kojima kind of writers we're getting yeah. into writers who know how to make a good story but not into a mm. convoluted backwards oh my god why did the kojima do that kind of like thing where it's like an hour-long cutscene of what he can do i love that man yeah that man's like my mount rushmore is on there the first face on there yeah no i think but i think like in itself as well when you say convoluted with kojima as well that's like a, a good convoluted because it's like when when i do when i say about life is strange is cringe people like like why do people like if it's cringe i'm not implying it's a bad cringe good yeah. cringe is a, a real thing as well um even if you do anything like you can make something which technically has a bad word on it 
sound good. So I think even with convoluted, for example, you could say like there are certain games that are quite convoluted, i.e. Bioshock, but they are very good in terms mm-hmm. of like what they're doing because they have a, a cohesive narrative. But again, as you said, you Ken Levine, your Michelle Co, your Kojima. There's always someone, Peter Molly, Peter Molly, Peter Molly. You always have like some overarching figure who's like the kind of like the lead front of that. And it kind of you can kind of see where it comes from their wacky mind, if anything. Um or uh Tetsuya Nomura for um Kingdom Hearts too. Like I was just like, oh indeed. wait, who was that? But yeah, like Shiro Amano. But yeah, all these people, like it's just it's not yeah. them, you know? Just no, like it's not. It's it's not a bad thing. It's just like we're setting our expectations really high. That would be like asking me, like, or or, or like saying, like, what if I composed for a game? And they're like expecting Hans Zimmer level. I'm just like, no, it's me. That's I'm, what making... I'm expecting. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm like, I'm making goofy cast a garden bullshit. You know, like, um, but that's what I mean. It's just like I'm not Hans Zimmer. Like I'm cast a garden. Same way with these writers. They're not you know, Ken Levine, they are Felish Khan. It's not, it's not a bad thing. It's just set our expectations on what their style is, you know? Mm. I think Adam Zimmer, uh, do you know if, if I use Max's power and I opened a rift here, I'd be on a call with Adam Zimmer doing Adam a, a Zimmer. music podcast instead. I mean, I'm not <laughs> trying gonna... to... Actually, you know what? Um, I just want to give you a guess, okay? So on mm. Spitfire... Uh, Spitfire is where I get most of my instruments from on uh, on okay. VST. Spitfire, I stand behind, right? Um, and I want you to guess, okay? So they Spitfire did um like a like a collab with Hans Zimmer and getting all of his kinds mm-hmm. of sounds, right? And for the That's Hans the Hans Zimmer package, okay. How much do you think that package is? Oh my god, it's gonna be like astronomical. Take a guess. It'll be like, like ten thousand dollars. You're pretty close, actually. Really? Yeah. Oh dude. wow. <laughs> so 15? I'm not. I'm not seeing. God, where's the, the? Where's like? There's one where it's just like all of his stuff. Oh, there by, we by go. stuff. What do you mean? If if I'm if I'm dropping a bomb, like what do you get in this package? So the okay, oh, never mind. It's not. It's it's not ten thousand. My bad. So oh. for the Zimmer <laughs> Professional, it's on sale right now. On sale for fourteen hundred dollars. Fourteen hundred dollars, and you get the which I think um, Spiffy bought. Yeah, it's the Hans Zimmer piano, the Hans Zimmer strings, and the Hans Zimmer percussion professional. So it's it's all the sounds that Hans Zimmer has approved and saying, like, I would use this piano and it's recorded from his instruments that he would normally use. Mm-hmm. So if you want, like, a professional Hans Zimmer sound, right, you you can get it for fourteen uh, for fourteen hundred dollars. But are you going to write something like Hans Zimmer is a different different beast in itself? You can have the instruments and you can be silly, goofy, but it's not going to sound like Hans Zimmer. Yeah, that's. I think like I think in itself as well. I think like if you want to take all the Hans Zimmer, because I in itself as well. Like I don't know if you would agree with me this. If you took Hans Zimmer stuff, wouldn't your music just sound like Hans Zimmer at that, or like a pale imitation of it? Like, would you not prefer to use like other unknown kind of like composer associated music instead? Yeah, like, if you were that... trying to fuse Hans Zimmer's music, Hans Zimmer's music into yours, it'd be like quite. That's obvious, why I don't have you know? the package. That's why I don't have it. <laughs> right. <laughs> Because it's just like, I don't know, people can use it all they want, but it's like, just because you pay $1,400 doesn't mean you're going to be Hans Zimmer, you know what I mean? Which is so true, because that, again, is the same with Life is Strange, because that's what the expectation is with double exposure, where people think that because, like, Max is coming back, it's going to be Life is Strange 1. It's like, again, you're missing all, as you just basically said, where it's like, Felicia Khan, we're not taking a dig at Felicia Khan. Felicia Khan is a very talented writer in her own sense. She's not Jean-Luc or... She's not like, you know, uh, Michelle or any of those people that worked on that game. It's like, she's a different gravy from that. And you kind of have to like settle for what you have there um, in itself. I have to ask you one thing as well, because I think we're going to come towards the end of our, our conversation with who's Safi Killer, because you kind of destroyed my theory. I'm going to go cry in a minute. Um, yeah. Do you do you think we've seen the killer yet? No, no. Because like, I'm going to I'm gonna show you one creepy, I, I think I've kind of done this person dirty, if anything, with the screenshots I took. <laughs> 
because <laughs> a lot of people would be like, hang on a minute. It's like, so it's this guy, which I'll put on the on the feed, and you've probably seen it. I think you've liked it as well on Instagram. Yes, which I did. Has, ha, which has, he's basically in a scene with Safi and Max in there, and the screen, <laughs> like, come on, Adam, that's hella sus. For the video version, guys, you have to watch this. It's like, he's got like, I'm the telling you right now, that, that's, that's your red herring. That is your... Oh, um, that's your Nathan Prescott right there. That's who it is. Calling my shot here. That that's your red herring. I because like someone said that. I think one of our one of our listeners said that that's potentially um, a love interest because I I very much assume that they're going to do the man girl option again because it's like the standard thing for Square Enix mm-hmm. and Deck Nine in terms of like there's this series if anything. So someone said it might be the love interest, which I can't agree with. Your red herring theory is very, very accurate as well. I think that potentially is one of the red herrings. It's, it, just, it does scream Mac vibes, if anything, from what I've seen so yes. far. Um, the killer yeah, is going to uh, be a man, but it's not going to be that man. You think it's going to be a man? I think it's going to be a man, yeah. I'm going to go for a woman. Yeah. Just as a bit of a curveball, yeah. I also have to ask you as well, because we're going down scream levels, because this is, reminds me a little bit of the first scream, if anything, mm. and the second scream and the first scream. Is it just one killer? Yes, one killer. One killer in each uh, alternative timeline. So there's going to be two separate mm. killers, but in different timelines. That is pot- that is potentially an interesting... Because like, Safi is alive in the other universe. That's the yes. thing with it. So Safi's there. But I have a funny feeling that potentially someone from that timeline could move into this timeline to support said killer, potentially. Because like, I think that's the only thing that I have kind of a bit of a disappointment with, if anything. Because like, besides double exposure having its own kind of problems, mm-hmm. I don't really know if you wanted to just do one killer. Because like, in itself, Scream was very clever for that. When Wes Craven did the second Scream, Yes. If you haven't watched it, I'm going to spoil it here, but like you need to go and watch Scream. I don't know what yeah. you've been doing. The entire spin was the fact that it's two killers. You know, no, sorry, it's two killers, but it's with different like mm. people. Like the big reveal is like, you know, in the in the first film it's it's Billy Loomis, Stu Mocker, then it's um Mikey and Billy Loomis's mom, and that's the big twist. But then in the third scream, the big twist is it's just one killer. And that yes. was the big surprise because everyone was expecting because the, the formula is written, isn't it? Same with Life is Strange. You kind of go in there expecting like I think that's where our expi- excitement comes from Lost Records, where it's like, we don't know anything about it yet. It could be anything that they're going to create from that. And that's excitement. But yeah, I'm kind of a little bit thing. Like, I'm kind of hoping that they do make it almost two killers in double exposure in some kind of sense. Like, obviously one person kills it, but the other person supporting them just kind of add a little, a little bit of a kind of mm. a, um, you know, a twist, if anything. Um, yeah, I think we'll, we'll, we'll kind of wrap it up here. I think it, my, my, my kind of like last point here will be, I think it's going to be a woman just to throw, I'm going to be like throw a curveball out here. I'm going to be, sure. it's a woman. And I still think it'll be one killer, even though I'd like it to kind of potentially be two killers where it's like almost like a tag team where you're being ganged up on on, on the other person. Um, and you, you're standing Yasmin on... Yasmin is the killer. Yes. Now, that would be an interesting thing as well. It's a woman and kills Which... her own daughter. And works at the university, is the president, has power. Hmm. Kills her own daughter. And doesn't have footsteps be... because she's the president. Presidents don't have footsteps. So soulless corporate person. Yeah, it? exactly. <laughs> I have a soul. That, that's that's the hidden deck nine message to Square Enix. The the the, the soulless president has made us kill this. <laughs> um, yeah, actually, you know what? That could be the big twist. Actually, that would yeah. be an interesting twist to put out there with Yasmin being the killer. I think that could actually work as well if you're going to work it in some kind of way, shape, or form. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, actually. I think we could, We can... Should we wrap that up there? Yeah, definitely. I like that. So, yeah, please let us know in the, in the comments what you think here. Obviously, Adam has just destroyed my entire, like, jumping through timeline theories and stuff like that. So do let us know what you're thinking here. I think you made some really solid points in there, and it's very interesting to see what happens up till launch because we'll see that. Obviously, we'll get more details. Adam, comment the day? Yes, Definitely. So we actually had another lovely comment on there, which was from um, Not the Milky Bar Kid, saying that they would support us on Patreon, which was thank you. And they said they would fe- support your crippling vinyl addiction. I was like, oh, I don't want to get in trouble from Liz. So it's like, we, we might not be able to do the Patreon now. But um, this is from Yellow Flash the Hockage, who's been on our streams before. And thank you for the comment. Because I think this is like, almost sums up how we felt about a lot of things. It's quite scary to read it. I'm convinced that they will respect both endings in the sense that you'll see both bits and reference here and there. 
text messages and small things like that, like they said in the reveal stream, but it will be a softish reboot for Max. Dak9 mm. will do the minimum to acknowledge the existence of the first game, but that will be it. Um, if I was to bet what's going to happen, I would go um, all in on the fact that we won't see Chloe, we won't see Kate, we won't see any of those original characters at all. I say all this, but of course, I would love to see Chloe again and have and have her be a big part of the game, but I just don't think it's feasible. The scope of the game won't be that um, that big. Also, congrats on getting a YouTube partner. Firstly, thank you for the last part. Adam, I think that message has summed up what we felt for the last four or five episodes. I 100% agree with everything that uh, the hawkage I think uh, has said. Yes. The, the hawk. Yes. The Hockage. Yes, the Hockage. I think the Hockage has summed up what I think people's expectations should be going to this game. Which I'm I'm curious. I mean, like, do you do you know what the Hockage is referencing? No, should I know? I I didn't know. You're not a big anime person, are you? I wish I was. I, this is the, the You fit the personality. Like, oh, thank you for that. I don't know what yeah. you're implying though. <laughs> <laughs> I always get that when people say it to me. It's like it's like you, oh you like um, I like games like I can see that I'm like what do you mean by that? It's, yeah. like, it's like see yeah one of my close friends who I know she's like madly obsessed with anime. It's like my my anime extent has gone to like obviously knowing Full Metal Alchemist, knowing Bleach, and then also like my main one, which is my favorite, which is Helsing. It's like you know that's like my Damn. my kind of all the ones except for what this is basically rather. <laughs> it's Go Naruto, on, please. Yeah. Oh, a, I'm pretty sure it's uh the fire priest. I think it it um it, it's referencing, but yeah, no, it's a it's a Naruto. So you went with uh Bleach. You went with Full Metal Alchemist. I'm like the biggest one. <laughs> you missed the big. Yeah. It's it here's a weird one as well because I I don't know what it was when I was growing up. I never got into Dragon Ball Z. I always used to see it on TV, but I never really kind of got it. Is Dragon Ball Z anime? Yes. Like anime, like, but I mean, anime in the sense of like Naruto and Full Metal Alchemist yes. in that same like echelon. What are you echelon. talking about? Yes. I, like, I'm Dragon Ball Z is what <laughs> started it all, basically. So the style really? of Dragon Ball Z, uh, oh, I feel so bad, dude. Oh, no. I forgot the, the original creator's name, but he just passed away. Um, Dragon, sorry. I got to look up the name because, like, I'm. Oh, I feel bad now. I'm interested. Yeah. Creative. Uh, creative. There we go. Uh, Akira, thank you. Akira Toriyama. Akira Toriyama, like, made the style of Dragon Ball Z with, like, the big eyes and, like, that, that like, big flash kind of thing. But he was mm -hmm. the one that, like, really um, paved the way for, like, anime styles that are known in the modern day today. So right. I would say yes. Um, Dragon Ball Z not only is anime, but has made modern anime the way it is today. I, I know I'm, I've obviously like embarrassed myself by saying that on like on on like a live podcast like stream thing, but I, I only said it because it's like it was always there on like TV, but it was on like Cartoon Network and stuff. And like obviously, I'm a big Yu Gi Oh fan, mm -hmm. but I don't really consider Yu Gi Oh anime in the sense of that anime, Do you know, like Bleach and Full Metal Alchemist, Helsing, um, and now Dragon Ball Z. I never considered it that kind of anime. I yeah. consider it a different anime. You know, same as like Pokemon, for example. Like that's well, it's a different like anime it's like thing. asking is Metallica and Megadeth metal, and it's like yes, right. you know, like, yeah. like that. That's what it is. It's like it's not like it's super like dark and coke, isn't it? Yeah, it's not like metalcore, but it's still metal. You know what I mean? Okay, no, I I I feel you. I feel you. Okay, yeah, fair play. But no, thank you for giving the reference. That was quite nice as well. Um, yeah. And yeah, yellow, yellow flash. Yeah, I think you basically hit what I think because I actually had someone like message me, you know, a couple of you mess message me like, "Do you know stuff about Chloe? Do you know about this and <laughs> stuff like that?" Yeah. I know my own stuff. I can't say anything because that's being told me in like you know in confidence and stuff. But it's like I think people are going to be in for a rude awakening with things because it's like I, it wouldn't surprise me if Chloe appears in some way, shape, or form. Mm -hmm. um, I've kind of tempered my expectations on that because I think it's intentional um, that she's not being appearing and stuff. But I think like I expect her to be in some way, shape, or form because. Rihanna DeVries, people have been like, you know, snooping through Rihanna DeVries' profile on like online. Rihanna DeVries has like said that they're working on like different games and stuff. Rihanna DeVries has been involved in every Deck Nine project since 2017, including The Expanse. Rihanna DeVries has done mocap in some way, shape or form for that team. Is also Chloe Price in um, Before mm -hmm. Storm. I expect Rihanna DeVries to do some kind of Chloe Price 
esque performance or something in this game. But I don't think it's going to get to a point in the game where Chloe Price is standing next to Max Caulfield trying to solve this murder mystery. Um, I could be very much shocked if that is, then that's going to be something quite like surprising. But I think that what this comment has said exactly on the point where the hockey just said, like, even the smaller references. So, for example, Kate, Kate Marsh, for example, might just be a text message. Yeah. I think this is a soft reboot. I think this is Max Caulfield at the helm of the new Life is Strange franchise. And we yeah. could see multiple sequels, for example, with Max like, at the helm. With of Max it. being in prison because she's the killer. Prison Max. Exactly. Yeah. Prison Break Max. There you prison go. Break Max, yeah. I think it could work. <laughs> yeah. Um, but no, I, th- I, th- I, think the, I think the comments, are, I think the comment is very valid. I think that comment has perfectly summed up everything I've felt about this game since it's been revealed. And again, it's mine's in with tempered expectations with things. I know some people are very like cutthroat with it. You've been cutthroat with certain things as well about it. Yeah. But I think it's fair. It's fair. It's a fair point to make because it's like, even that the scope of the game won't be that big. It won't be. What do we cover in that allegations piece that like Life is Strange was getting low balled off to the lowest punter or something like that. Yeah. It's like, the budget ain't going to be that big, man. You ain't writing scripts that are big for this. We've talked about this. You've made music as well. Like you have to like, you've written scripts before, like writing a script is like yeah. completely different in terms of like the scale and size of the project. So yeah, I, I'm a very, very great comment. Yellow flash, the hawkage. And thank you for the comment as well. And as we've always said as well, please leave the comments on the, on the episodes. We'll read out the best one. And again, we rotate them. So if you ever wonder why we don't pick the same person, we're just trying to give people we've never like maybe mentioned or stuff reference in here so yeah thank you for that comment agreed with very much you've said that and again we will be covering double exposure up to launch and beyond and life is strange in general as well so do stay tuned with us adam comment of the day comment of the, day. Of the day spread the arts spread oh the yes arts. Spread, spread the, the arts. arts um do you want to go first i'll go uh no you go first because i got i got a twist on mine Oh, he's got, wow. I, I, yeah. I do look forward to spread the arts and what we get. Uh, my shout out will be very simple because um, I think it's right for this as well. And it was my spread of the arts recently, a while back. It was that Cassidy Pope has made a new album called Hereditary. Mm. Um, that is now available. So it is fully re- released. Um, nice. If you go and check that out, I, I was pleasantly woke up to my Apple Music, opened up, and all the rap tracks are loaded. I was like, lovely. Um, nice. I really dig it. I think she's a very talented musician. I was a big Hey Monday fan back in the day. Basically, to sell this kind of album, it's basically a homecoming for someone who transitioned into country music for a long period of time, has come back into pop music, pop pop punk kind of music, if anything. If you're a Paramore fan from the 2000s and you didn't like the direction that Paramore took with their recent stuff, it basically yeah. sounds like almost something Paramore would produce back in the day. So I think like if you do want that kind of vibe... I would 100% recommend it because it's my second favorite album of the year behind anything Casta Garden has produced. So <laughs> um, it's definitely worth checking out. Unfortunately, Adam, you will follow below that as well because Zed is producing a new album for next month, which I'm I know. Isn't that about. wild, dude? Zed's coming out, man. It's got, it's actually, he's got one song available as well if you are interested. So the new album is called uh, Telos, which I had no idea was happening. I saw it on Twitter. I was like, oh my um... God. I was like, basically anyone's i zed is like my favorite musician by far now like mm-hmm. hands down true colors and 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 his other album clarity like were is it true colors clarity i think it's clarity yeah were two of the best albums i've ever heard like in terms of thinking like that is like his work if anything he's done like a couple of songs here and there like little singles unbelievable yeah but it's been like nine years since he's produced an album i've been yeah. like I'm like, where are you, man? It's like, why are you not producing? I know he's done tours and stuff, but not produced an album, but he is now producing an album called Telos. And it's like, he's released one song called Out of Time. And oh, Adam, Damn. I know that sound from anywhere. I know yeah. when I hear that beat, I know that beat from anywhere. And I, I've, I've been looking as well, because it's like, there's a vinyl version coming out. And I'm like, Ooh. my vinyl collection might start soon now. Okay. I need free Z albums. <laughs> yeah. There's there's Because they're all available on vinyl. And if I need to pay a premium for True Colors, I will, because that's the yeah. second album he produced my vinyl collection might build from this point. Cause it's like, this guy's jam is just, Hell it's too yeah, good. So, so it's like, uh, I'm, that will be my spread of the arts in August. We'll come back to that because when the full album is coming out, I'm going to be like, you need to go and listen to it. He's my unbelievable, my favorite artist by far. So currently Casty Garden is at top. Then it's Casty Pope. So I would recommend you check out Casty Pope's album on uh, Apple music, Spotify It's very good. Actually, she's a very good artist. Nice. Over to you, sir. Uh, as always, I'll just, pitch mine um yeah i got two of them i got two to spread the arts but one is uh the retro policy is out now uh i produced mm-hmm. it with brian mcginnis doing the voice acting in it and uh had some little twists and turns that even he didn't know about um yeah. like marcus's part he didn't know about i wrote that in and i asked marcus can you put that in and dude 
Brian just face palmed. I'm like, oh my god, what is this? So it's it's a really fun album. Um, I thought it was like the best I can possibly do in terms of uh, where I am skill set wise. My hair is falling out of my hat, so that's cool. Um, we're just gonna leave it like that. I'm gonna look like a crazy person. <laughs> But um, yeah, no, it's it's a it's a really fun album. I really had fun doing it. So uh, the retro policy is out now on Cast Garden. So go check it out. Uh, but my twist for spread the arts before 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 he picks that as well, guys. As well, this is Cliff Blazinski has listened to this music. Cliffy B, yes. the God of War, the God of War, the Gears of War Gears creator. Of War. Like you know, Cliffy B has listened to this album. You didn't even mention that as well. I said to this guy, I was like. He's like, you should just put Cliffy B's endorsement on on the album and be like, there you go. It's like Cliff, that's that's yeah, what you need. But Cliff yeah, Blazinski retweeted it. He listened to it. He liked it. He said it was a super weird. So the fact that Cliff uh, actually listened to my shit, so it's wild, dude. It's a, it's a really good it's a really good feeling to know that like Cliff Blazinski approved it. So, um, yes. Yeah, sure. So if you if you like Cliff Blazinski, you'll love this album, I guess. <laughs> but my other spread the arts uh during my break i watched hideo kojima's connecting worlds uh, uh yeah i forget about strange cast we're changing this podcast yeah it's now kojima podcast did yeah you, did you watch it yet i haven't actually watched it yet no i will say okay so I'm going to say this, that the Connecting Worlds documentary doesn't go into... I wish it went more into Kojima's life, but this is basically mm. uh, how he made Death Stranding and like kind of like yeah. that sort of thing. I, w- I wish it went into more detail, uh, but I will say if, if you're a big Kojima fan, I think this is a great uh, interview documentary kind of thing. I think it's mm-hmm. like less than an hour or two, if I remember correctly. Mm-hmm uh hideo kojima it's on disney plus i believe i isn't it? i i actually watched it on hulu uh which oh did you mm-hmm. yeah disney plus and hulu are going hand in hand uh mm-hmm. but i saw it on hulu uh and yeah it's got a 6.6 out of 10 on imdb i don't think it's the perfect documentary but at the same time i think um you know uh yeah i can't see how long it is but like at the same time, I think if you're a big Kojima fan, if you're really interested in about his life and how he grew up and uh, how he gets all of his stories together, um, I, I think it's a it's a fun watch, you know. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, no, I I really liked it. So um, uh, Hideo Kojima Connecting Worlds it's available on Disney Plus and Hulu. So I don't know, check it out. I can't believe you kept that quiet from me. Damn. Yeah, yeah it's um. It's interesting you say that because the book Jim Warner showed Eric Mori when we spoke about it on the podcast that I had from Kojima. Like yeah. I've read that book, but that's just that's essays. So for example, it's not actually like an autobiography. It's like almost a little bit misleading. It's like it's it's things that have inspired him. So it's like essay little little essays on certain pieces of like two thousand one Space Odyssey. Mm. Um, and it's funny when you mention about his life because obviously like he has like a, I think he has a wife and a son, but he hasn't yes. like really talked about his personal life. So it's very like off off yeah. the record. Um, and that seems like obviously it's more about his kind of like it's almost in the studio it kind of reminds me of um the one that i haven't seen it yet obviously the kojima one but it reminds me of the miyazaki one that they did mm. where it's like when he was like making his like film then he announces a retirement studio ghibli the, one of the retirements that he reti- yeah. <laughs> retired it's like it's like that way it's like the creative process if anything but when you mentioned that as well i would love for example if like you had like that in every development studio so like for example if we had something like that in the lost records one with like don't know montreal i would love to have like a like an exposition from that just to like listen to like michelle and luke and like all the developers talk about making the game and stuff like that's mm-hmm. such a lost thing in the video game industry where it's like making those like hands-on in 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 the set because that's the thing with kojima if anything because mm-hmm. as you said it's a bit like you don't have the personal life but to hear the creative process from like a pretty out there developer is quite interesting same with like michelle he's quite out there in terms of the ideas and theories and stuff he puts out there in terms of like his creative process that's just like fascinating for me I would love for more shows to have something like that. Mm. Um, even like again with like Lost Records. Lost Records would be a fascinating one just to hear what happens there as well in oh, between, yeah. like in the creative process and development. Um, but no, I'm going to check that out though. It's yeah. on my list of things to do. It's definitely, I'm definitely keen to see it. I'm actually watching my brother when we catch up at some point. Nice. Yeah, great recommendation. So I think we'll end here. So thank mm. you so much for being uh, for joining us, Adam. Great to have you back as well after our 
extended break from lost records if anything and also again let, let us know in the comments who you think the killer is is it pompadour is it, it is mushroom it <laughs> yeah let's let's hear those theories because i think adam has like really changed my perspective on max if anything being the killer i think it could be very simplistic if anything now but mm-hmm. let us know because it is a big topical thing so as always as well if you are new here before we sign off um if you are new here on the YouTube channel, please do consider dropping a subscribe on the channel. Turn notifications, like the video, share with your friends. Help support the channel. We're almost at 1,200 subscribers. We're very close to it. So please do subscribe if you don't. Helps keep up to date content. Helps support a very small channel. And Strangecast is available on all podcast services. So we're available on Spotify. We've over 200 followers. Thank you so much for that. Also rate us as well. We're on 22 ratings. So thank you so much for that as well. And again, on all these other podcast services. We're back later this month. The Lost Records Journal is going to come back as well. So we'll be having a meatier topic on that. Um, a bit more kind of like... I don't know what we'll talk about. It'll be a bit more kind of, it'll be a bit more about the game, if anything. I think we've been talking about life is strange and delays and stuff, but that'll be more about lost records, if anything. And that'll be um good to talk about. But yeah, until then, guys, take care. We'll see you later. Bye. Peace. Ready for the mosh pit, shock